Hello, hello, Crafty Crandall here. Today I wanted to go through my portrait painting process. Now you'll see here that I actually have two sketches, one of the female on the left and then one of the male on the right. Uh, the uh, female portrait unfortunately did not end up working out for me. I filmed the first part of it and then had some issues where I like deviated from what my normal process would be and so rather than capture that one in this video i'm going to be focusing primarily on the portrait of the gentleman instead my portrait process always starts with a sketch um i'm not sure who said it first or what um, person i'm quoting in saying this but without a foundation of a good drawing your painting is not going to be good so i always try to start with like a solid sketch that i can really follow and understand where my shadows are going etc so uh, i try to sketch usually in a colored pencil this is a cola race colored pencil and i just try to get the features as close as possible to my reference now Pretty much every single time, I always have some sort of issue with this. So in this case, this gentleman's cheeks don't really look the way that I depicted them, but I stuck with my sketch and continued to roll with it throughout the process. Once I was happy with the sketch, I moved forward to step number two. Step number two is to paint the base layers. Now I always choose my lightest possible color that I can really identify in the skin tone as what I call my quote unquote base layer. I do this because watercolor works such that you have to paint light to dark. So I want to identify my lightest tones and block those in first and then preserve them throughout the painting process. You will see me do a bit of lifting here. That's because the lightest tone that I chose, I realized after the fact, wasn't quite light enough. So I lifted a bit of the paint off of, for instance, his nose and his cheeks, so that those highlights really stood out. And then I preserved them throughout the rest of the painting process. In addition to those lightest tones, I also then start going through a bit of the shadows. So I want to block in just a touch of the shadows in addition to the base layer that I'm getting. I'm using a wet on wet technique for this, so I am starting with the paint pretty wet and then I am using wet paint on top of that to get the little blooming effect that I want and so that the paint will then spread out and it won't be such a harsh edge on those first couple of layers of shadows. As we go further into the process, there will be some areas where I do want that hard edge, and so I won't use the wet on wet technique. But usually for the first couple of layers of my portrait painting process, I am using the wet on wet technique. So hopefully this adequately depicts it for you. Uh, I used a mix of both sped up and real time footage for you so that you can hopefully see what I'm doing without having all of the minutia of like, watching me do it in real time. Uh, these portraits took about two hours a piece, so it was not a quick process. And I should mention as well, between every layer that you see me paint, I am letting the piece dry completely. So a lot of time elapsed in the process of letting it dry as well. Once I am finished with those base layer um, shadows though, I will move into my step three process. And step three is really just going to be a continuation and kind of like an iterative process. So once I get the base layers established, I essentially just continue to consult my reference and determine where the other shadows are and what additional darker paint I need to mix up to make those shadows possible. Here for the blocking in of the shadows, you will see me use more of a uh, wet on dry technique. So the paint is still pretty saturated with water, but the painting layer underneath is very dry. So 
I use this method to get those first couple of layers of shadows in after the base layer is done. Um, I use this method because here I do want a pretty crisp edge to what I'm painting. I don't want it to feather out quite as much, although you will see once we get into the sped up part of the painting that I do feather out parts of like the nose contouring because I want that to blend in a little bit more with the rest, like the planes of the face so that you can clearly see where, um, you know, his nose is going deeper, like away from the viewer into the painting. And so I want that to blend into his cheek where it starts to then come up so that it doesn't look quite as crisp and hard because that plane of the face is more, um, well, okay, less angular than um, some of the other planes. Whereas the creases that go into um, like his, uh, like where his forehead is and um, back by his cheeks into his beard, those are going to be a lot darker and so I don't need to feather those out as much. They can remain as dark as they are because that's what's going to make the whole piece have a lot more contrast to it, which is really what I want. As far as blocking in the rest of the shadows, um, this is really just a first pass of the um, wet on dry technique. So. I don't spend too much time here. I just want to get those first initial layers in so that we can build on them in step four. All right, I zoomed in here for what I would like to call the detailed shadow region. Um, I ch purposely chose a reference, uh, which by the way, my reference photos were from Pixabay. So they were, um, you know, royalty-free photos. Um, but I purposely chose the reference that I did because I wanted to have a more wrinkled appearance to the face so that I could also practice painting a wrinkled appearance and really getting the contrast that the wrinkles allow you to have in the piece. So these are going to be pretty dark shadows as far as like the overall values of the piece are concerned and it's going to be a lot of more uh, detail work. So smaller brush, um, definitely a lot less paint on the brush, and again, using more of a wet on dry technique, but with far less water than I was previously. Other areas that I wanna capture in this are, um, I will start on the eyeballs, you'll see that at the end, um, and also the eyebrows, and then more of the frame of the face. So the areas surrounding, like on the very edges of what you see, those areas are areas that I really need to get a lot of contrast in, because if I invert my reference photo, those are the areas with the darkest values. And so I really wanted to try to capture that in this piece, try to match the values as closely as possible to the reference because that's what's gonna make it look quote unquote realistic. Now again, starting with a good sketch is also part of that. So because his cheekbone structure isn't exactly how it is in the reference, um, capturing likeness there didn't really happen and that has nothing to do with the painting and everything to do with the sketch that I was following. That said though, um, I did also just want to address that I wait to do the eyes until the middle of the piece. You'll notice that I still haven't done the eyes yet. They're coming here at the end of step five um, just to start them off and then they'll be finished in step six. I do this because I don't want to ruin the eyes when I start working on the painting. So when I'm first putting in those first washes of color for um, steps like one, two, and three, I don't want to have to lift paint off of the eye area. I want to leave the eye area until a point at which I feel comfortable that I'm not going to have to go over the eyes again so that I don't have to worry about messing them up because there is nothing worse than getting the eyes exactly how you want them and then accidentally getting paint in them, trying to lift it, realizing that you've lifted paint off the eyes and then having them no longer be smooth or cohesive or clear as the eyes. 
<laughs> I would also just like to note that um, the eyebrows here are not great. Hair in general is one of those things that I'm still working on. So I don't have any tips for painting hair. It is something that I really want to get better at myself and will probably also look up on YouTube myself, uh, realistically painting hair with watercolor. I mean, even off to the left, as you can see, um, her hair isn't great either. <laughs> so that is something that I am really working on and hope to improve on in the future. And so with that, we will move forward with our final step, which is just putting it all together. This is the point in the process at which I begin working on things other than the face. This for this portrait includes um, the turban and also the gentleman's beard. I really loved the fact that this reference included the um, cloth folds that it did because I have been working so hard on painting more realistic folded clothing. I believe I've mentioned this in a couple of videos thus far, and so you're probably sick of hearing it at this point, but it is something that I'm looking to improve on, and so this reference really pushed me to figure out how to do that. Did it turn out great? You decide in the comments below. However, it did give me some great practice, and I really enjoyed the process, so I had to realize quickly that the base tone that I painted over was not um, light enough. So again, I start the same process here that I did with the rest of the face in that I start with the lightest tones, move into adding detail and adding the darker shadow parts as I go. I start with the wet on wet technique and then I move into a more of a wet on dry approach and then eventually for the very fine tiny details which albeit I didn't really have in this part of the painting but I did at the end of the painting I will use more of like a dry brush technique so that I can get really fine details and more textured elements into the piece. I also started working on his beard, which was definitely a challenge and I definitely could have pushed further on in that I don't think I captured all of the values and or colors of the beard very well. He did have some portions of the beard that had more of a yellowish appearance and I didn't even try to capture that <laughs> in this piece. So again, definitely hair is going to be an area of work for me in the future, but I did just want to include the footage so that it wasn't just, you know, a face that didn't have, you know, a complete um, portrait behind it. So I wanted to finish the piece such that it looked like the reference so that you could see how it ended up looking and uh, hopefully apply this process for some of your own pieces in the future. Hopefully this was helpful for you. I realize that this part of the um, painting isn't exactly part of painting a portrait, but hopefully the tips earlier helped and hopefully just seeing someone paint uh, with this process is useful for you. I know that I watch so many of these videos watching so many people, you know, use watercolor to paint realistic portraits. And every time I do that, I pick something new up, which I can then apply to my own process. So hopefully that's what you got out of this video. I would really appreciate it if you liked this video, if you would give it a thumbs up. If you're interested in more art and book related content, I post new videos every single Tuesday and occasionally on Friday and would really appreciate it if you would subscribe to my channel. Moving forward, I hope to do more of these uh, more tutorial type videos, though I admit I am not truly an expert on any like stretch of the imagination. I am learning right alongside you and kind of just hope to document that process and Hope to engage with other artists on that journey as well. Always striving to get better, always striving to learn new things, and just hoping to kind of build a community surrounding that. 
So I really appreciate you guys watching and please let me know if there's anything that I can do better next time. If you didn't really like the format of this video, um, if the audio was frustrating for you, <laughs> please let me know. Always trying to improve that as well. So with that guys, um, I finished painting the whole piece and then give you the final result here. Let me know what you think of the piece down below in the comments, and I will catch you in the next one. Thank you. Bye.